Hey, what's going on? I'm Keith here at Sports Vibes TV. And in this video, I'm going to be reviewing some film from the Knicks' win against the Boston Celtics on Sunday. If you're a fan of this Knicks film session series, I would just ask you to consider subscribing, making sure you hit that bell icon. That way you're notified whenever I do drop a new one of these film series uh, videos. So with that being said, let's jump right into the first play. So as you can see over here, Austin Rivers initially has the ball. You're going to see OB cut over to the corner three, and then you're going to see IQ come and receive the ball from Austin Rivers. Now, after that happens, Mitch is going to pull up, and he's going to set the screen for Emmanuel quickly. And what I like about this is you see the shiftiness of IQ. So IQ does this little, uh, this little hes hesitation move, and it causes Tristan Thompson to react to him because when he does the hesitation move, Tristan doesn't know if he's going to pull up on a mid-range or, or what. So Tristan Thompson reacts, uh, decides to guard against the mid-range, just in case that's what IQ was going to do. And this gives IQ the, uh, the step to get to the basket with ease. And one thing you're going to see that I think IQ could work on a little bit is going to be finishing with his left. As you can see, IQ throws up a, a little awkward floater-ish kind of shot. And I think the reason he does that is because he's not uh, too confident in his left-handed layups. So I want to see him work on finishing with his left. That's something that's definitely uh, an area where he can uh, target and practice. And I want to see that uh, manifest itself on the court moving forward. So that's one area you guys can look at when it comes to Emmanuel quickly to see if he progresses. Now, in this play, I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm actually going to be reviewing a Celtics play and uh, how our defense reacted to it. Uh, as you can see, Kemba originally has the ball. He passes it up. And now you're going to see this Boston Celtics defender kind of rub off on Kevin Knox just to create a little separation and a little bit of a distraction to, to free up for what's about to come. And as you can see, uh, Tristan Thompson now is going to come and he's going to receive the ball at the top of the key. And as the play continues to develop, now you're going to see Kimball Walker set the screen on Kevin Knox. But what irks me in this play is the fact that Austin Rivers is signaling where the play or where the player is about to go. And he sees Kevin Knox is about to be picked by Kimball Walker. You know, you can say maybe Austin Rivers is assuming that uh, Kimba is not going to be able to set a solid screen on Kevin Knox, but you know, as a teammate, you got to make sure that these players are not getting open cuts to the basket. So as the play continues to develop, uh, as you can see, there's that wide open space on the court that even Austin Rivers himself is pointing to. And that's exactly where the Boston play is going to go. But Austin Rivers does something mind blowing. He jumps to the same side that Kevin Knox is on when he's being screened. <laughs> And this gives the Boston Celtics uh, even more space to operate in the paint. Look at that. This paint is wide open. At this point, there is no Nick with a foot in the paint. Well, Rivers got a little bit of his foot in the paint. But other than that, there's nobody guarding the paint. And you'll see they're going to get a nice, easy alley-oop dunk. And shouldn't have happened. I think Austin Rivers should have uh, uh, switched and stopped that penetration. I mean, not that penetration, but stopped the the player from getting to the basket that easily and we would have been able to to i think have a much better defensive possession but unfortunately rivers made that boneheaded play and we had to live with it so now in this play you're going to see obi with the rock and he's signaling to kevin knox but kevin knox misses it kevin knox uh, ends up clearing out so now obi you're going to see start to handle the rock and you want to see Obi's handle get a little bit tighter than this and you, you would hope to see him be able to be better at being able to get into his position get into his spot with a much smaller defender on him because let's be honest that's a mismatch that Obi should be able to attack but he gives the ball up to Austin Rivers and another thing I like about Obi is when Obi gives the ball up he doesn't act like he's no longer involved in the play Obi continues to move and he continues to find the right spot on the court to help out his teammates and to make easier passing lanes. And you're going to see that in this play because now watch 
Emmanuel quickly is given way too much space right now by the Celtics. And what's going to happen is the Celtics are going to try to, to close out and get IQ off that three-point line. And IQ does a great job. He does that pump fake, and it, uh, it causes the Boston Celtics defender to move out of position and allows IQ to get that step. And you're going to see OB's defender is paying too much attention to what's going on with the ball. He's ball watching and not paying attention to his man. And this allows OB to have the backdoor cut. Something that I was mentioning in, in, a, in some of my uh, uh, videos when I'm reviewing the actual games and giving my thoughts on the games, you don't see it enough backdoor cut action. But you see that on this play with Obi, And Obi's going to get a wide open alley-oop dunk. And that's something I want to see more from between IQ and Obi. I think they have a, so a budding chemistry uh, growing between the two. And I think if they get more time on the court together, it's just going to get better and better. And their, their chemistry on the court is just going to blossom even more. Now, in this play, we're going to see RJ operating. He's attacking the basket. But what he's also doing is he's attacking the basket while keeping his head up. And he's going to find Alfred Payton wide open uh, in the corner three. And what Peyton does is Peyton sees that the defender is now attracted to him and coming to defend. So he swings it over to Randall. And what Randall does is a good job. Randall is shooting, I think, 36% or something around there from three-point line. And, you know, the Celtics have to react to him as an as a actual shooter, as somebody that can kill them from three if they give him the opportunity to. So you're going to see them close out. And while they close out, Julius Randall does a good job of putting the ball on the floor, getting to the uh, paint. And when he gets to the paint, he's not just looking to score for himself. You're going to see here, he finds the passing lane for RJ and he gives RJ a nice pass and RJ does what he has to do and he knocks down the three. That's something I want to see more of, of, of Randall getting into the paint and, and finding his teammates. Not that he doesn't do enough of it, but you know, you can never do enough of that i think you can always get into the paint find teammates and rack up assists i think that'd be a perfect uh way to run the offense especially with the way randall has been performing so far now you're going to see in this play iq brings the ball up and you're going to see a screen set by obi this is some more of the chemistry building between iq and obi some pick and roll game with him between the two nice little two-man game you see the vision from IQ, able to give Obi a beautiful bounce pass, and Obi does the rest, gets into the paint fairly easy, and able to throw it down. Highlight real Obi. This is what this is the Obi that they told us we would see uh, when we drafted him. I mean, it's cool that he's able to knock down that three point shot, but I want to see a lot more of this, a lot more of Obi heading towards the basket. As opposed to OB, you know, fading and shooting. I'm, I'm fine with him doing that, but I think this is what's going to get him hyped up, get him started. You know, like the play before that was the alley oop. The play this the this play was him going to the basket pick and roll, and then you're going to see what happens with the next play. So now this play, you're going to see IQ. One thing I don't like about this is the fact that IQ allows the defender to, to, to force him over to the sideline and pretty much use the sideline as an additional defender. And another thing I don't really like is the fact that IQ decides to make a jump pass cross court. Um, that's something that he's going to have to not do. I've seen him make a, a lot of jump passes. He's going to have to try to get that out of his, uh, his repertoire. The bad pass, to me personally, I really don't want him jump passing and throwing it to the other side of the court. I would have preferred if he would have you know, allowed some of, some of his teammates would have came over to help him out. But that's neither here nor there right now. Let's continue with the play. You're going to see Austin Rivers now is going to attack the basket. And one thing I like about Austin Rivers is he has the ability to score for himself and he can also pass to teammates. So now you can see he gets into the paint. He draws the attention of three Celtics defenders, and this leads Obi wide open. And Austin Rivers does a good job getting to the basket and finding Obi when he sees that he's contested or he's being defended. And I'm liking what I saw from this team 
in that game. And if we can continue to play this way, you know, the wins are going to come. Like I keep, I continue to say that it's not necessarily about wins and losses. It's about the, the development and production of our players. So if they continue to play like this, I'm going to be ecstatic as a uh, Knicks fan. So once again, if you like this video, if you have your own thoughts on what you saw with some of these plays, let me know down in the comments. Once again, I'm Keese, host of Sports Vibes TV, and I'm out.